Uh, yeah, Scott, go ahead and for uh, game, please. Uh, one, two, uh, PLO, 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 and uh, the name Gaines. All right, thanks for two. Yup, you are on the right channel, and you heard that correctly, PLO Pot Limit Omaha. I wanted to try out a new game for you all and see what the Omaha streets were all about for myself. So hope you guys enjoy this one. I know you will. It's Olympia weekend, and it's finally back here in Las Vegas. It's been in Florida the last three or four years since the Cove, but it made it back here. So I'm really excited to check it out. But in the meantime, gonna play some cards. All right, this is for all you Pot Limit Omaha fans out there. We're gonna do something that we've never done on the channel, and that is to play some PLO, to actually sit down and play a whole session of Pot Limit Omaha. I know we played many times double board PLO bomb pots on this channel that you guys have seen, but we've never played a full session of PLO. And I know a lot of you guys like to play PLO, so we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it for you. And I just felt like it, I wanted to do it, I don't know. So we're gonna see what this wild game's all about. It shouldn't be too much longer. I think we're second on the list, so five, 10 minutes, maybe less, hopefully. We're just waiting for our name to be called. But hopefully we can run up a stack, wish us luck, and let's do this. I'm pretty nervous, not gonna lie. Don't really know the rules 100%, as I'll explain throughout the video, but it can't be that much different than Hold'em, right? We start with the max $1,000 at this 1-2 PLO game at the Aria, and it's a new table, but shorthanded. They called people, but only four of us showed up, and we all agreed to just start, and start with the $20 bomb pot. I'm like, all right, I'm okay with this. This is pretty normal, because I played a lot of these at my time here. So we all put in $20 in the middle, and off to two boards. Gotta get everyone to fold, or have the best hand on both boards to win the entire pot. We have ace, 10, nine, five with three spades, first to act. Not the best hand having three spades because we only can use two at best, but the top board is king, jack, seven with two spades, and the bottom board is six, five, four, rainbow. We have a flush draw and double gutter on the top board and just a small pair on the bottom, so nothing really there. We check in flow and the lady next to act bets out for pot, $80. Both guys get out of the way and it's only us two, so why not? We throw in $80 for a call. The turns are eight of clubs and four of spades. Wish those were flip-flopped, cause we still have the same on the top and nothing changed on the bottom. We check again and she announces all in for $200. I'm kinda like, eh, whatever. It's hard to win on both boards, even though we don't even have made hands on either. We can still improve with a variety of rivers. The rivers do come out and we hit our flush on the top, but still nothing on the bottom. And we do end up chopping. We got lucky, super lucky, cause she had top set on the top board with the set of kings. So we did need one of our outs to take the lead. And was just drawing to another five on the bottom to win that one. So we got lucky making 40 bucks in the process. We only play two hands after that and I get moved to the main game. Even though the table was short, my name was first on the list. So that's why they moved me. So we're on a new table now. Same seat, just a new table. It's our third hand dealt in and we have aces. We raise in the big blind. There's a limp at the end of the gun and the end of the gun won. It folds to us and remember when I said I didn't know the rules quite yet. We raise to three red chips cause one $2 blinds and the two limps that's $13 cause I just found out the hand before it's an open to five or it's a limp for five instead of the $2 big blind amount. So already some confusion going on in my brain. So I announced raise for $13 I guess but I didn't get any change back. So I guess it was a raise to 15, which I found out later is a normal open 15 or $20. So way smaller than it should have been with the two limbs, but we're still rolling with it. Both limpers do make the call and we're three ways to a flop out of position. And it comes king, queen, seven with two spades. What do we do here? Normally I know what to do if it was Hold'em with aces, but in this spot versus two opponents, doesn't seem very good, so we just check. The under the gun checks, and just hoping the under the gun one checks as well, but he doesn't, he bets out $40. And I look back at my cards, and I guess we have backdoor flush, but I don't know, we just let it go. 
All my PLO people, let me know if that was quote unquote standard. Don't hold back, it's okay, I can take it. And I kinda just wanna learn too, to be honest. We play for the next hour just getting our feet wet, winning some hands, losing some hands, really just learning what other people are doing. So we discovered that pre-flop, it's not PLO, cause technically there's only $3 in the middle at first. That was something I was asking myself before even starting playing. For example, if someone wanted to pot it and there was just a few limpers pre-flop, remember I thought it was $2, like the big blind amount, not $5 open. And I was like, they could only raise to five or seven dollars. That doesn't make much sense. But that was quickly learned. Pot Limit Omaha makes way more sense after the flop when there's enough money in the middle. But anyway, still getting the hang of this when this hand comes up and we have aces again. This time on the button, there's an under the gun straddle to ten dollars. The under the gun one next to act, limps for ten, folds to us, and we see aces. We raise it up to forty dollars, playing it like a hold'em game. 3x plus 1x for the limper. The small blind folds, the big blind comes along for $40, the straddler folds, and the undergun one limper who has three or 400 in his stack limp three bets to $175. I ask him to move his hands so I can see his stack and he doesn't have any blacks and we have aces, so can be in too bad of shape. I'll go pot. He sticks it in right away and he asks once or twice. I say one time and you all know me. I usually let my opponent decide, but PLO, you know how many cards are gonna be on the screen? And probably nine times out of 10 in PLO hands are chopped running it twice. So not wanting to sort so many cards out and I don't wanna be chopping pots all night cause what's the fun in that? I say one time and we're off to one run out. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh, I mean. Yeah. We go runner runner full house. I say we had aces, but didn't even need the aces in this one. And I didn't even see he had a pair of eights as well. Thought it was eight nine. So technically he was ahead because his cards were higher than my seven four. Is that how it counts? <laughs> like uh, He's got okay. I mean, I don't know how those numbers work because we have, I mean, obviously the aces, but <laughs> mine were offsuit. You can hit trips with two hit cards. He can hit. You can make straight. You can make. Yeah, I can make a straight, but he can make a flush. So is that like? You didn't have any suits. No, I don't think I'd have any suits. Mine were black and uh, seven four. Seven four was red. And C, still trying to learn who was ahead technically, asking these guys questions. I wasn't really trying to give off the impression I never played PLO before, but after a while, I let the cat out of the bag and I said, nah, this is my first time. This hand is probably a rookie mistake. We flopped the nut flush. We're in the small blind. It's a limp pot five ways. I check in flow, expecting someone to bet, and then we can check raise, but unfortunately it checks around. Turn comes and it's a straight card, eight of hearts. We still have the nuts, so first to act, can't really have this check again, and we announce pot, throwing out two greens, even though there's only $30 in the middle. Maybe it looked a little too strong throwing out two greens, cause one by one, everyone folds. And again, not sure what the right move was there. Maybe we should have checked again and hope somebody bet or perhaps led the flop. Not sure, but it was nice catching the nuts and especially nice keeping the nuts on the turn because that was really rare to do as I soon found out, catching the nuts and keeping them as more streets came out. I'm sure all PLO players can agree with that one. There were quite a few hands we get involved in. We had a higher V pip than we normally play in Hold'em. Seems like any pair or higher pair ASEC suited were good to see flops with. Wraps were also nice, double suited, even if it was King 8 suited with Queen Jack, another suit. Just seemed like more possibilities. Well, duh, four cards instead of two, but you get what I mean. This hand almost an hour later, we have Ace Queen, Ace five suited 
seven of clubs, ace of diamonds, five of diamonds, queen of spades, seven of clubs. I honestly don't even know how to say some of these hands. I mean, it's easier to say we have ace, king, pocket eights, double suited. I mean, that just sounds a lot smoother. But yeah, we have what we just said. We raised brief flop to $15 in the cutoff. The big blind calls and the middle position limper calls as well. And we go three ways to a flop. And we flop top two pair, ace, queen, two with two clubs. They both check and flow to us and we have a good hand, right? So we make a continuation bet and throw out $40, almost a pot size bet. The big blind thinks for a few seconds and makes the call. The middle position gets out of the way. So now our heads up. The turn comes, a jack of hearts. He checks again. And I think about checking back, but have to charge draws. So I bet again, and this time for $75. He thinks again, a lot longer this time, and eventually jams all in. I ask how much it is, and it's around $250. And normally in a hold'em hand, it's a pretty standard call for $175 more. He could easily have pair plus straight draw, pair plus flush draw. So again, pretty standard call in a hold'em situation. But I don't know. We look back at our cards and just decide to lay it down. He said he had the nuts, so king 10, and he also had clubs, so good lay down on our part. Should have checked to see a free card, but that's just results oriented. I'm still happy how we played it though. We play a double board bomb pot because of the dealer change. We don't hit anything, but the very next hand we get involved and we have ace king suited 10 3 offsuit. There's an under the gun straddle to $10. We're in the low jack and raise it up to 30. It folds around all the way to the straddler who makes a call for $20 more. So we're heads up to a flop and it comes 10, nine, three rainbow. The under the gun checks to us and I think we have two pair, I think. I found myself looking back at my cards a lot during this session and hold them. It's very easy to remember your two whole cards, but in Omaha, I feel like I was looking back at them way too much. But then I realized everyone was doing the same thing. So I didn't feel that bad. But again, in Hold'em, looking back at your cards could be a tell depending on the situation. And here, I just feel like it's harder to remember four cards and the suits. But anyway, he checks and we make a C bet, a continuation bet to $25. He does make the call for 25 and the turn comes. Ace of hearts brings the backdoor flush draw. And I know we have two pair now because I remember the ace. I surely remember the ace, but maybe now it's three pair if that's a thing. But regardless, we have a decent hand and there are draws available. So let's bet again when he checks to us. And we do, and we throw out $75 this time. My opponent lets it go right away. So we take it down with three pair. Two hands later, we're in the end of the gun and we look down at pocket eight single suited. We just limp for $5, amateur move, or is it? I feel like limping is far more common in Omaha than in Hold'em for some reason. Maybe that was just this table. It's hard to say. I wasn't keeping track or anything, just felt like it to me, I don't know. So we do limp for $5, the cutoff limps, action on the button, and he raises to 25. The blinds get out of the way, and not much to do besides call. So we do, and the cutoff calls as well. So we're three ways to a flop out of position, and it comes 10, eight, three with two clubs. We hit middle set, but we check in flow. The cutoff checks as well, and the button, the pre-flop aggressor, makes a C-bet and bets out $50. I really still don't know what to do here. A raise seems like the standard best play, but is that overplaying middle set? Mostly gonna get folds from air. I guess a flush draw can call, but we just smooth call and see what develops. And the cutoff calls as well, so still three ways to a turn. And it comes a 10 of hearts, so we boat up. A big hand, flopping a set of eights and turning a full house. But this is where the inexperience of PLO comes into play. I mean, it's a great hand, but any 10 random card can pair up for 10s full. Normally in Hold'em, I would play this aggressively to get value from a 10, cause in a raised pot, 10-8 or 10-3 shouldn't be in their range. So we have the nuts technically, but here anyone can have 10x, random 10x. We check again, as does the cutoff, and the button doesn't seem deterred that he got called by two opponents, and he continues for $125. Now the question is, do we raise or just smooth call? Again, we could already be drawing to one out. The button has a $500 purple chip and others, so around 1K total in his stack. And I don't really wanna raise, and then he jams, and we're forced to fold, I think. So we just make it easier on ourselves and make the call, hoping for, I don't know, another eight on the river. The cutoff gets out of the way, which is good news. And now off to a river, heads up, and it comes a blank, a two of diamonds. 
which is again, mostly a blank, but he could easily have pocket aces, 10 deuce and be ahead. So I don't know, we just check in flow, hoping he doesn't make a pot size bet and we can call, but right away he checks back. So was kind of hoping he bet, but not pot. Again, the inexperience kind of screwed me on this one and I know it, but still take down a decent sized pot. It's been another half hour and it's time for a double board bomb pot. We have pocket fives, rainbow and the under the gun. It's almost a full table. So there's $120 in the middle to start. The top board is jack five, three with two clubs and the bottom board is ace with a pair of nines. Both blinds check and we have a set on one of the boards and nothing on the other. So we lead for $100. It folds to the cutoff. He calls for less, 85 I think, 85 or 90. He was the only customer and when it was all said and done, we actually river quads on the top board. And I think he rivered a straight on the bottom and he had a nine anyway, so his trips were already good. Still pretty cool to hit quads though. We're feeling good so far, up about three or $400, so not bad, let's keep it going. In this one, there's another gun shadow to $10. The other gun one lens for 10. Next to act folds, action on us. Then we have an okay hand and we limp along. The cutoff limbs, button and small blind get out of the way. Big blind puts in $10 and the straddler checks his option. So we're five ways to a flop and it comes nine, six, two with two diamonds. The action checks all the way around. No one seems too interested. The turn comes at three of diamonds. We don't have much besides the ace of diamonds nut blocker and can't really win if we don't put money in the middle. So when it checks to us, we take a stab and throw out $30. Our image is relatively good at this point, not showing down garbage. So maybe we can get some credit, but still don't really advise betting into four other opponents with one pair and no draw holding in Omaha. But we do anyway, we get the first player to fold. So that's already a win. Gonna be in position the rest of the hand. The big line snap calls a $30 bet and both the under the gun and under the gun one fold. So not a bad result besides just taking it down right here without a fight. And we go heads up to a river and it's ace of spades an okay card I guess for us cause we have two pair now and better card for the aggressor or maybe that just applies to hold them. But the big blind checks to us and we're telling a story that we have a good hand and we have the nut ace high blocker. So we continue and go a little bigger this time to put some pressure and we make it $125. But it's really like $100 cause that's all the opponent had in his stack. Over $100, less than 125, somewhere in the middle, I don't know. Basically a pot sized bet, putting him all in. This bet puts him in the blender. He looks back at his cards, has them in his hand. Seems like he wants to fold, but doesn't release. I'm like, muck, muck, you have nothing. I know if he calls, we probably lose cause two pair in this game is not that good of a hand on the river not the best two pair at that. So it's not gonna cut it. And after about 30 seconds, he does lay it down. I'm like, woo, all right, we got our first legit bluff through. At least it felt like a bluff in my mind. The very next shuffle, we're in the under the gun one. There's no straddle on. The under the gun folds and we're next to act and look down at pocket aces, 10 ain't suited. No brainer here, we open things up to $15. The low jack calls 15, the hijack folds, the cutoff puts in a $100 chip and announces 60. It folds around back to us and in similar situation as the last time we four bet with aces, this opponent has a little bit more than $400 though. That doesn't deter us, but let's just try something different this time and smooth call, see what happens. The low jack gets out of the way, so we're heads up to a flop and it comes eight, six, four rainbow. We check in flow to him, see what he wants to do, and he bets out for $100. We look back at our cards, and maybe I was hoping to connect a little more. Aces are not too likely to improve on this board. And honestly, out of position, what can we really do facing more aggression? So we just let this one go. I know it's aces, but especially in this game, can't fall in love with the bullets. The very next shuffle, we have a decent hand, ace high, double suited. We limp for $5, folds around all the way to the small blind, who's the only caller, who doesn't have too much to play behind, maybe $200. So we're heads up and it comes king jack seven with two diamonds. We have some diamonds and a double gutter and a gutter to the nut straight. The connection we we're kind of hoping for last hand, the small blind checks to us and we have potential. So we throw out a small bet to $10. The small blind doesn't like $10, then he puts in 20, a min click. And you know by now, 
not folding them in clicks. So we throw in $10 more for a call. The turn comes and we hit our flush. It's a nine of diamonds. He doesn't seem concerned that the flush came in and he continues for $55. He only has a little over $100 left behind in his stack. And I think about raising and getting it in now, but I don't really think it matters. It's probably gonna go in on the river regardless, but unless it's like a bad, bad card for us, like pairing the board, we're getting it in. So we just make the call for $55. And just like we hope the river doesn't change anything, it's a 10 of spades. He does jam, and if he does have a better flush than us, so be it. We call, and when we call, he doesn't seem like he wants to show. So we just flip over our flush, and he eventually does muck. If he had more money behind, would have most likely raised the turn to charge a set from pairing the board on the river. But with so little behind, I think either calling like we did or raising are fine options. Not too long after that, what do you know, it's aces again. Getting aces four times in a session in Omaha is not as cool as getting aces four times in a session in Hold'em, but aces nonetheless, and a little better this time because one of those aces is suited, so that's a plus. There's a $10 under the gun straddle in this hand. The under the gun one limps for 10, folds to us in the hijack, and we raise it up to 40. The straddler calls and the limber calls as well, so three ways to a flop, and it comes eight, eight, three with two clubs. Generally, it's a good board with aces, but the straddler leads out for $60. He doesn't check to the aggressor like you should, but I'm not gonna pretend I'm an expert at Omaha. Maybe donk leads are a thing here, I don't know, but the under the gun one folds and the donk lead is just weird and aces is unlikely to improve on this board, so we just let it go. See, told you aces in Omaha isn't as cool. The very next shuffle, aces again, back to back. Let's see if this one treats us any better. No straddle on in this one. The under the gun limps for $5, folds to us, and we raise to 20, folds back to the limper, and he makes a call. So heads up to a flop, and a lot better flop than last time. We hit top set. He checks to us in flow. Good job, sir. And we make a C bet and throw out a small one for $15. He makes the call pretty quickly. I figure with anything really, back doors or clubs, two pair, can't really be sure in this game, but off to a turn and it comes a brick, it's a five of hearts. He checks again and now we gotta put in more money, a bigger bet this time. So we continue in the amount of $65. Probably could have gone even bigger, but this is the same player we stacked with our flush where he only had $100 behind. And similar in this situation, he short stack again he has less than 300 total in a stack. So with a call, that'll leave him with 215, 220, nearly a pot sized bet for the river, but apparently he doesn't wanna wait to the river cause he basically jams his whole stack in and not really a decision for us. We have the nuts. No one's, no one's ever gonna find me whenever I'm the bag. All in or whatever, pot. I have the nuts so far, but. One. Uh, clubs are good. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I had the nuts. I just... You're good. Can't do anything really, you know? So he had clubs and a set, set of fives. The set was drawing to one out, but the clubs. This hand pretty much played itself. Just didn't go our way this time. I can already hear it now. Should have run it twice. No, I told myself and you guys only once this session, too many cards and split pots, didn't want that. So ran it once and he drills the club to win. It wasn't for too much though, it could have been worse. Maybe that was a sign to get out cause the next time we're gonna go over, we're in the big blind and look down at pocket nines, nine eight suited. It folds around to the button who opens to $15, the small blind calls and we made the call as well and we're three ways to a flop in between two opponents, and it comes king, queen, 10 with two spades. We both check to the button, and he c bets to $25. The small blind calls, and we call again to see what happens. We have some possibilities. I'm new! I'm new! I don't know what to do! The turn is a jack of clubs, the small blind checks, and we check again for a second time because we don't improve and luckily the button slows down and checks, so free card coming, and we do hit our flush, it's a three of spades. The small blind checks, and we hit our hand, we have a flush, so we bet out $75. The button thinks for a little bit, then grabs chips and raises to $225.
The small blind quickly folds, and this player was a good player, so capable of making a move with the naked ace of spades. So we just say F it and toss in a chip for a call. They can't always have it, or can they? Cause this time the button shows us the bad news with the ace high flush. Oh well, what are you gonna do? It's time for another bomb pot. Just had the dealer change, so everyone puts in $20 in preflop, and off to two boards. The top board is king, queen, two with two spades, and the bottom is three, three, king, rainbow. We look down at king, queen, jack, five, rainbow. We have two pair on both boards, so a decent hand, I think, but we still check in flow first to act. It checks to the hijack, who announces pot for $140. The cutoff and button fold, action on us, and I think we have enough on both boards to continue, so we do and make the call. He only has $55 left, so just gotta be worried about the remaining players, but no need for that, cause they get out of the way. Before the turns even come out, we lead for his remaining stack, which on top is a jack of clubs, so we catch three pair, and on the bottom is a two of hearts, doesn't improve us. He makes the call right away, and the rivers come, a six of spades and an ace of clubs. Our opponent has jack six, four, three, double suited. Wow. He had a three for trips on the bottom, and on top, he rivered a flush. A bad, a really bad run of cards in the last 20 minutes. Just insane. Again, not a massive pot or anything, but slowly bleeding out. Was up a good amount at the beginning, now down a few hundred dollars, but still feels like a lot more. Gotta keep biting though, so let's bounce back. This next hand we're gonna go over, we're in the cutoff. There's another gun straddle to $10. There's one limper in the low jack. The hijack folds, and we look down at pocket 10 single suited. We limp along the button and the small blind fold. The big blind calls, and the under the gun checks his option. So, four ways to a flop in position, and we hit top set on a 10 9 6 2 heart board. We have the second nuts, only losing to 8 7. They all check to us, and we have a good hand, so we pot it for $40. Only the big blind and the under the gun call, so three ways now to a turn, and it's a queen of clubs. Brings in a few more straight possibilities with jack eight and king jack, so downgrading us slowly. They both check again, action on us, and we gotta put in more money in the middle before we are severely downgraded, so we continue and bet out $115. The small blind thinks it over, not sure if he wants to call, raise, or fold, but after about 20 seconds, he does muck, and the low jack glances back at his cards and lets it go as well. I'm happy with that result, I did not want to see any more cards come out. It's really strange going from living life on the flop, flopping top set, then the turn comes out and your sets almost feel like bluff catchers. Our nuts or our second nuts turn into not such a great hand and who knows, one of them calls and the river is another heart and at that point probably just want to curl up in a ball. But lucky for us, we take down a decent sized pot, giving us a little confidence booster from going on that bad run we just had. A few minutes before midnight, we get involved in this one. We have ace high, single suited. We're under the gun, first to act, and have an okay hand, so we open things up to $15. It folds to the button, who comes along, and that entices the small blind and the big blind to do the same. So we go four ways to a flop, and it comes ace high, ace eight, six, rainbow. The blinds check to us, and we have a pair, but I don't think worthy enough of a c-bet. So we check, and the button checks as well, so free card coming, and it's the four of clubs, brings the backdoor flush draw, but improves us now to two pair. The blinds check again for a second time, and now I think it's okay to bet with our hand, so we throw out a delayed c-bet and make it a quarter. The button makes the call, the small blind makes the call, I'm like, oh no. I guess lucky the big blind gets out of the way, so at least eliminated one player, but now off to the river three ways and it's not a good one, it's eight of spades, counterfeiting our two pair. I guess we have aces and eights with a queen kicker now, but still, the small blind checks, we check, and hoping the button checks behind, which he does, whew, we show our hand, and it's still good. In this hand, we're in the cutoff, there's out of the gun straddle to $10, the other gun one folds, action on us, and we have a wrap, I think it's what the PLO players call it. Or it might be when the flop comes out, but I think what it means is all the cards are connected straight-wise. So if your cards come out, you need any of your cards for a straight. So just saying they're all close together. Queen, Jack, Nine, Eight. 
And we have a pseudo connector as well. We limp for $10. And the reason you see a lot of limping, cause I had raisin spots and then someone pots it. And I haven't played Omaha enough yet to really know what that means, how to narrow down that range preflop, if that makes sense. So I think it's easier to either raise better hands like ace x, double suited or pair suited, just easier to play or limp and call raises to keep the pots manageable and then play post flop. So if you're wondering why all the limping, that's why. The button limps, the small blind mucks, but the big blind wants to play for more and he raises to $55. The other gun gets out of the way and this is why we limped in the first place to call any raise. So we do, we just call. The button folds his cards, so that's good. We're heads up in position and the flop comes 883 rainbow. Bingo, let's go. He was the initial aggressor and he's first to act and he makes a continuation bet for $50. And this is where we have a decision. If we raise now, aren't we kind of screaming we have an eight all day? There's only one more eight left in the deck, so not really worried about him having one. It is a rainbow board. If it did have a flush or straight draw on it, I'd lean more towards raising, but we're in position. And if he wants to keep on firing with air, we're gonna let him. So we just move call the $50. And it just gets better and better. The turn is a magical nine of clubs. We have a full house only losing to pocket nines now. And there's only one combination of that left. So we pretty much have the nuts. As suspected, he slows down and checks on over to us. Now the question is how much do we bet? We want to go big, but not pot it to scare him off whatever he's floating with. Now that the back door flush draw comes in. So the number we come up with is $125. He thinks for a little bit, looks back at his cards, and does decide to make the call. And all I'm thinking is, no card higher than a nine, come on. But nope, the dealer hates us and puts out the king of spades. The flush draw miss, so when he checks on over to us, maybe he can put us on a miss flush draw, I don't know. We have a solid hand, so I think checking back is just soft. So we think about how much to bet and come up with a number and throw out $225. My opponent thinks briefly and then puts his whole stack in the middle for a total of $640. It doesn't look like much, but remember he has the purple $500 chip and I just throw up in my mouth. I don't know what to do. I guess if you have pocket kings, it'll make the log, huh? <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Let me, can I see that? I was like, I called it too. Nice Thanks. check, nice check, buddy. I mean, I laid that trap. Five what? Huh? Six something? More than that. I was like, just no high card. I was like, no high card. Nice hand. Lucky, Six forty. Is that turn check though? No, I bet 125. He bet, he bet, okay. Yeah, I bet he called and... That river, man. Yeah. That's it for me. Yup, that river, wow. Calling for a two outer. I guess he wasn't blocking club, so maybe that's why he called on the turn. But still, gross, super gross. Yeah, I wasn't having it after that, I was so done. Just was a sick last hour, bleeding out, then winning a few hands to get back in the green, then that big one. It was fun playing a new game and doing relatively well for my first time, I think, besides the final result, of course. Will Gaines Poker ever play PLO again? <laughs> I don't know, might have to do some studying first, but had a good time nonetheless. Met some viewers of the channel, which is always awesome, and hope you guys got some entertainment out of this at least. And here we're off to the official outro. Wow, that is all she wrote, guys. <laughs> I thought the swings in Hold'em were big and bad, but eh, Pot Limit Omaha is a different game. I mean, we were we, we were up a lot, especially that first hand. What was it? Uh, aces versus aces, and I go runner runner like full house. My seven and four played went like seven four seven seven four or something like that i mean 
that was just a cooler that went in our way, which was awesome. But I mean, we were up, what was it, six, seven hundred, maybe even more? I don't know. And there's a few people around. So, and again, you guys know, I could care less. So, gotta get this outro in. But in the game for 1,000, out for a lot less. What was it, 147? So, hey, didn't go broke. My first time playing Hot Limit Omaha, so that's good. But yeah, I mean, I. It was hard to to figure out what spots were good to do what. I mean, I I mean we got a lot of hands, so a lot of hands to go over. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. But like I said, the hands that like flopping a set or flopping top set, like do we bet or do we check? Like when the would I have tens? Pop, top set of tens and the turn came like a queen or something and my top set is no longer the nuts or even second nuts i mean what do we do it's it's hard and then the pre-flop action i mean a lot of just calling 15 or somebody raising pre for 15 and then five or six callers like i guess you want to isolate but you don't want to get re-popped with pocket kings because pocket kings and pilot Omaha is not even that good to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, I'm I'm a hold'em player. I'm gonna stick to hold'em. I mean, not just because we lost. I mean, we had a blast. It was so much fun. I mean, those guys were asking me so many questions about the vlog. I mean, they opened up after a while, after a few hours. I mean, they were asking me questions like. How long have you been doing it? How many subscribers do you have? Like, how much money do you make? How long does it take to edit a video? And I was trying to answer all the questions, trying to play, trying to remember what cards I had. I mean, it's easy in Hold'em when you only have two cards to remember. Yeah, I have a seven suited or I have two red sixes, but when you have four cards, I mean, you have to keep looking back at them like, did I have hearts or did I have diamonds? Like, I don't, I don't know. But I felt like I played okay. I mean, you guys can let me know because some of you guys actually do play Pot, Pot Limit Omaha. So you guys can definitely uh, let me know in the comments. But I thought I played okay. Like I said, I was winning. But that one stretch of hands, it was like three or four hands back to back. And we just lost them all. I mean, one of them, what is it, flush over flush. Like when he raised me on the river, like... I don't know, maybe he's doing that with Ace of Spades and nothing else, but like, again, I really don't know, so yeah, I might just, uh, well, I not might, I am gonna stick to just two cards from now on, but we wanted to try something different, something different for you guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully all you Pot Limit Omaha people appreciated it, or just all you guys in general appreciated it, but it's the morning, it's AM 1, yeah. 1 30 in the morning so we're gonna get back to the room get some sleep and we're gonna stick to the two cards tomorrow but in vegas a few more days and can't wait for the olympia honestly uh this weekend so that's gonna be good haven't seen it in four years since because it was here in vegas all the time so it was always an excuse to come to vegas around this time for the olympia to check it out the expo um, but it's been in like Florida, I think, the last three or four years because of because of the cove. Can I even say that anymore? The cove. <laughs> um, but yeah, so glad it's back here and glad we get to check it out this weekend. So that's gonna be fun. But we're still gonna play some cards. I mean, that's that's what we do. We play cards on here and like to do it. Like to have fun. So that's what we're gonna do. But you guys have a good night. Good morning. Well, technically it is the morning right now. So good morning. But, yeah, hope you guys have a good day, good night. Whenever you're seeing this, you saw this. So, hey, it's a great day. You woke up. And, uh, yeah, that's the trouble of always doing outros when there's random people and in the street around. So, hope you guys can hear me. But, yeah, always remember, I'm Matty Ice. This is Gaines Poker. Peace out.